Hi, welcome back to the Blues Time Power Hour. Now we're in for some fun. We're going to a recent performance of Jimmy McCracklin and his all-star group at Yoshi's, a club in San Francisco. You might check out some of the members of the band. We've got some really excellent musicians from the Bay Area. So let's get going with a hop, skip, and a jump. How about that Jimmy McCracklin on stage? Well, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from more music, and we're going to show you the official interview. You've seen the unofficial interview, and now we're going to show you the official interview with Jimmy McCracklin, so that's coming right up, and we'll see The Walk, as performed by Jimmy McCracklin on the Blues Time Power Hour. Hello, and welcome to this portion of the Blues Time Power Hour as we travel the West Coast in search of the best in blues. Our travels has led us to Richmond, California, and we have the pleasure of being in the home of a gentleman who was a big part of the post-war blues era around the Bay Area. On the wall behind me, you can see numerous gold records, such songs as The Walk, I've Got to Know, Think. He's responsible for writing numerous tunes, such as Tramp, I have the great pleasure of sitting in the house next to the one and only. He's been, uh, it's been said he's one of the true, the last of the true fine southern gentlemen. The one and only Jimmy McCracklin. Jimmy, indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. As I said, Jimmy, uh, what we're doing here at the Blues Time Power Hour, we're using this in an in a entertaining way, but also in an educational way, to expose you and your music to those who, unfortunately, maybe have has not had the chance to enjoy uh -huh. the creations of Jimmy McCracken. Musically speaking, where did it all start for you? Well, you know, I hope, hope I've always hoped that I could be a contribution to the music and industrial of the world, you know, and the hip and other folks, because I've had a rough time in it coming up, you know, and we still have rough times. It's nothing easy out there anymore, you know. And I take it from the experience, you know, there's only a, uh, to tell the younger sets about this particular thing they call music and in recording and stuff like that. The greatest thing in the world that I would like to say is determination is what you've got to have. Because, you know, people look at things like, if I try this over here and it fails, I don't try anymore. That ain't the way you do it in the music. You've got to keep at it, keep at it, because anything that you keep trying to do, you're going to do it better. And you have to have that determination. So that's what I had, you know, because I know a lot of friends of mine, musicians that just gave up along the roadside, you know, they said, the heck with it, I'm not going to fool it no more, it's too rough out there, I don't get me a day job. 
Well, I've had day jobs when I first got into this business from construction workers, bus drivers, truck drivers, and you name it, you know, but I stuck with it. And there's only a few of us out here now what they call uh, the legendary old timers like Lowell Fulson and B.B. King, Bobby Blue Bland, and uh, Joe William, Little Richard, and you name them, you know, it's a, quite a few of us out, we're still out here. Jerry Butler, he was, he was out there, you know, stuff like that, and we still out here yet, see? So that proves one thing, if you got the determination, you can survive, you know, you can make it, see? And now it's a lot easier for me now than it used to be because instead of worrying about recording every other two, three weeks, I just sit back and wait on them to buy my old material, and this is what they buy. Now, when you mention uh, the old material, first thing that comes to mind is a record uh, song that you uh, wrote and is still popular today, The Walk. Well, what made The Walk so popular, you know, I was a... Uh, one of the two of the blues acts that performed on the Dick Clark show during 1915-59. Uh, once the walk got out there, you know, we was lucky enough to get a big sale on the walk and it took off real fast. In two weeks time, I think we did almost 60,000 records. And uh, what I was told that I get credit for uh, being the first one to uh, create the dance routine things on the Dick Clark show. And after that, well, you name the dance guys came along with dance tunes like uh, Chubby Check and all them different guys come up with dance songs, you know. But the walk was fortunate enough to uh, to turn the table for me. And uh, it's the funny thing how I came up with the walk, you know. I recorded in Chicago. I was uh, on the road behind. I had a band, a five-piece band behind the, the late and the great Joe Turner. And uh, we was in Chicago. So Joe Turner uh, finished up his work there. We wouldn't follow Joe. I said, well, Joe, you through with us. We're going to stay here and get us a record out. That's what I told Joe. So. We got a job at a little place called Freighter's Lounge in Chicago on the south side. I believe that we was making about five or six dollars a night apiece. As leader, they was paying me, I think, about eight dollars. So I took my money. The rent was costing us something like a dollar and a half a night, you know, at that time. <laughs> so I took my money and I uh, paid rent and kept the fellas there for about three or four days. I said, oh, look, fellas, I got a song called The Walk. I, I didn't say what it was called. I said, I got a song that I want to record. And all the record companies was mostly located in Chicago at that time. And uh, I took the fellas to the studios, about three or four of us, the saxophone, the guitar player, myself, and one more, the bass player, the drummer. And we recorded that song called The Walk. The reason I recorded it was because we got the idea from playing music in that club, the Freighter's Lounge. That was a couple in there. They'd walk to the bandstand and they'd walk all back to the front door. They'd walk back to the bandstand, but they was on the beat. So that gave me an idea to call a song The Walk. And I walked around in Chicago four or five days with, it, with The Walk in my arm trying to trying to peddle it to some record company, trying to give it away. Nobody would accept it. So finally, I went to Chess Records about three or four times, and one of the owners, Phil Chess, said, well, leave it here, say, I'll listen to it. And we had to get out the hotel anyway because we hadn't been working in the last three or four days and the money to run out. And uh, I left it with Chess. And before we could get back to California, and I will broke down station wagon, four or five days later, we heard the thing on the radio. That was the walk. Thank you. Now for her, if you are, we gonna do this little tune. I was looking to get a gold record on. There's another thing that is called.
Well, that was it. Jimmy McCracklin's hit tune, The Walk. How'd you like his four daughters singing backup vocals? Pretty good, huh? Runs in the family. Well, coming up, we have more interview and Jimmy McCracklin and his all-star band performing one of my favorite tunes, How'd You Like Your New Love? So stick around. Come back on the Blues Time Power Hour. Welcome back to the Blues Time Power Hour. Coming up, we have one of my favorite tunes by Jimmy McCracklin, How Do You Like Your New Love? Then we'll have a little bit of the official interview and um, some Jimmy McCracklin piano. So stay with us and we hope you enjoy this segment of the Blues Time Power Hour. <laughs> to another big tune that, that you penned and has been copied by numerous artists, both blues, rhythm and blues, and even some pop and hip. 